there's a, a, a lot of activity around smart cities. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of interest in being able to make our cities more efficient, make it possible to be able to move around our cities more efficiently. So right. it's a, a real opportunity for cities to take advantage of some of the new technologies that we have. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it's also a potential for vulnerability and exploits. So this uh, story I picked up on is from the Secure List, and they basically looked at smart terminals uh, associated with smart cities. So parking meters, bike rental, kiosks, movie mm -hmm. ticket terminals, even, you know, it's rare, but they even some uh, cities with public restrooms have mm -hmm. smart meters on the public restrooms. So, you know, these are, they're, they're not your average IoT device, but they have some of the same characteristics. They're always on. Uh, they handle user and payment data, which is mm -hmm. sensitive. Um, they're always connected to each other and to the internet and, you know, kind of back home, dial home for uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. um, but really these are PCs with touchscreens. Mm -hmm. So they're, um, you know, they have a lot of the same uh, potential for vulnerability. While they have a lot of the characteristics of IoT devices, there should be a layer of oversight and control on these smart cities. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're being implemented at the city level or at some sort of entity, and, you know, there should be some security layer on top. So mm -hmm. it's not really personal. These aren't personal devices. It's a, either it's a bike rental company or mm -hmm. the city municipal parking authority. You know, there should be some, some entity controlling security on these mm -hmm. devices.